what can we do at lunch besides eat? Well, what do you have in mind? Nothing a lady could put into words, partner. That's wicked. Miss Chris Coughlin, you want her alive? All you gotta do is tell us what the money is. Now you get that money in 24 hours with Cloud or she's dead, do you hear me? They've kidnapped Chris. You think you can keep a thing like this quiet? The chief has got to be told. McCloud, did I ever tell you, you drive me nuts. <laughs> How do you think it feels? Where is he? We ain't gonna believe this, but he's in New York. In New York? Yeah. He's uh, doing some kind of temporary assignment with the New York cops, you know? Well, that's even better. A man can get killed real easy in New York. Real easy. Burglary is the fastest growing major crime in the country today. We've had more than our share of it, as you well know. We now have solid information from various informants that a single multi-million dollar ring was back of the rash of burglaries we had last October. And we've learned they're ready to hit again. Now that means that every available able-bodied man will be on night burglary detail until further notice. That includes you, McLeod. Appreciate your confidence, Chief. You bet. <laughs> Dismissed. Chief, if it isn't too much to ask, I mean, it's about my partner. Well, what about your partner? Well, I was wondering, is it McLeod again? Oh, I'm sure I can arrange that. Oh, no. Well, it's not that I have anything against McLeod, but, well, I've been sergeant. Excuse me. Uh, I don't I hope I'm not interrupting nothing here, but well, I just wonder, who am I assigned to, do you know? Well, let's see. Uh, you'll be working with... Uh... Broadhurst. Oh, 
Unless you have some objection. No, no. Uh, well, I was wondering if it's really fair to McLeod uh, drawing the same partner all the time. I mean, he's here to learn, and you really only learn by having varied experiences and by meeting and working with different people. <laughs> hey, don't give it another thought, Joe. I don't mind getting stuck with you. As a matter of fact, uh, we haven't had a dull time of yet, have we? That's true. <laughs> Good. And it's all settled. The odd couple rides again. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me. Uh, uh look, Joe. Now, something's bothering you. If you got something on your mind, just spit it out. I mean, what are friends for? Well, it's not that I don't like you, McLeod. I mean, I, I really do, you know? It's just that every time we work together, mm -hmm. everything always goes wrong. <laughs> always. <laughs> well, we have had a few funny ones there in the past. Yeah. A few, huh? Well, they always work out all right, Joe. Yeah, it's what happens before that I'm talking about. You see, McLeod, my anniversary is coming up tomorrow night, and I've arranged to uh, swap shifts with Grover. Oh, that is, I had arranged. As soon as he finds out that you're going to be his partner, huh? Are you kidding? Hey, don't give out another thought, Joe. Grover and me, we're just as good of friends as fleas on a $2 dog. <laughs> That's what she thinks. Hey, you better uh, get a little sleep. we got to get back here at 1.30, yeah. you know. Hey, Joe. Now, this is the one. You watch. Just going to be a piece of cake, that's all. Nothing's going to happen. like this is going to be the last dinner for a while, Chris. I'll be working nights until we come up with something. You mean that burglary business? Mm-hmm. Well, I can't say I care much for that. Well, there's always lunch. I can't say I care much for that either. What can we do at lunch besides eat? Uh, well, what do you have in mind? Nothing a lady could put into words, partner. <laughs> That's wicked. <laughs> Well, we always got to weekend. That's not going to work either. I'm going to Connecticut to get a start on my new book. Put it off. I've been putting it off and off and off, thanks to you. Yeah, just put it off and off again. <laughs> my publishers just don't understand about marshals and things coming into a girl's life. Oh. So, you're just going to have to solve this burglary business tonight, Sam. Otherwise, it complicates everything. Mm. In fact, I insist on it. Well, I guess I'll just have to oblige the lady. There you go. watching this guy. Every move he's made. I even sucked around headquarters. I made some contacts. Right? Now, according to the duty roster, he's working down by the river tonight. That's terrific. Listen, uh, we better kick this thing around. Well, look, I figure we can get him tomorrow. We're down by his hotel tomorrow, we'll get him. Why wait? You heard him, he's working tonight. A lot of cops get in trouble on duty. Just hold it. 
We're going to figure this thing out. Figure it out? I've been figuring it out for 12 years. Every day, every minute. Every time I forget, I got this arm to remind me what I owe him. We get him tonight! Suppose it could be. Could be anybody. Feds, insurance boys, cops, anyone who knew we were out. That settles it. We'll cool it. Cool it, hell. We're going. With a tail? So shake it. What am I supposed to do, Burl? Fly away? We'll make our move later. Now. We do it now. We can't. Now, oh, you guys. All right, you get McLeod. I'll take care of the tail. Hell. Don't worry about it. I'll think of something. Just keep turning corners. All right. crazy, but this got to be insane. There's too many cops around here. Relax, will you? It's just a two o'clock shift going off duty, that's all. Okay, there he is. He sure doesn't seem to have changed much.
tips are reliable. Man, the trouble with tips, Joe, they can work both ways. Both ways? Yeah, they can tip us and then tip them that they tipped us. That way they can knock over a whole other part of town while we're in the wrong place at the right time. Cloud, let's just do a job and let Clifford worry about the possibility. I'm just thinking out loud, Joe, that's all. Just thinking out loud. That's the trouble, McLeod. Every time you start thinking, things start happening to me. <laughs> Look, I'm just a guest here. I'm just visiting the New York Police Department. If thinking goes against the grain, I'll refrain from it. Hey, we still on for that shift swap tomorrow night? What? Oh, the anniversary. Yeah, sure. I don't see any reason why I... Uh, Joe, can I talk to you a minute? Uh, we got some coffee left if you want. No, no, we brought some fresh there. Thank okay, you Paul, let's cash it in, huh? Later. No trouble, I hope. No, no, no trouble. You set up across the street. Yeah, I'm gonna be working with Grover tomorrow night, is that right? Right, right. I'll, I'll cover the back. You cover the front. What did it cost you? McLeod, you don't want to know. <laughs> I just would kind of like to know what the going rate is. I got to pull a weekend shift for Grover. Well, that doesn't seem fair. A whole weekend just for one night. And that one night, you know, will probably be the night that he gets a citation for busting up a burglary gang. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you get all the citations you want to with Grover. As for tonight, we'll just take it nice and easy. No waves, understand? I don't want to spend my anniversary tomorrow filling out paperwork. I got you, Joe. your horse, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look like you could use a little help. Oh, me? Yeah. Well, I'm just down here at this bar down here. Not well, it's a don't... great idea, cowboy. Why don't you just shut up? This isn't your night, fellas. You're not a police officer. No kidding. It seemed like a setup to me. A setup? Who? What for? Well, dang if I know. Did you get the license number? No. What next, McLeod? What next? All right, hold it right there, both of you. Hey, take it easy. We're police officers, too. I said hold it. Hey, he's telling it like it is, partner. We're on stakeout. What's that have to do with breaking and entering? Well, that's, uh, it's kind of a long story. Yeah, we'll tell it to the chief of police. I was jumped. I got suckered. Uh-huh. Why? Good question. Well, thank you, McLeod. I pride myself on asking good questions. I hope that buried somewhere in that head of yours is a good answer. No, except and I think maybe that some of these tips that we've been operating on are a mite fishy. I see. And just how do you come to that interesting conclusion? Well, either that or there's a leak around here somewhere. In my department? Oh, come on, McLeod. Let's not get paranoid about this. You know, you're beginning to sound like a real New Yorker. Maybe. But they knew that we were there. Then why didn't they attack Broadhurst? <sighs> no, McLeod. Just a couple of punks out on the town roaming around. They spot you, out for a thrill or your bankroll happens all the time. 
Well, it just didn't have that, that kind of a feel to it, Chief. You know, they knew that I was a cop. How? In that getup? Well, I said I'm a police officer. The guy behind me with a gun on my back says, no kidding. I mean, no kidding. So? I hear there are people in this country that just don't like cops. So what do you want me to do, just forget about it? Might as well, McLeod. Happens all the time. It's about time you learned that. Well, I'd still like to run it down if you don't mind. Sorry, you're on night stakeouts indefinitely. Then I'll do it in the day, on my own time. McLeod, did I ever tell you, you drive me nuts. You're always in some kind of a foul-up. Foul-up? That was no foul-up. You think right, I like getting hit? I can't tell you what to do when you're off duty, but if you do anything that rubs off on anybody in this department... Chief, I appreciate it. Well, McLeod, when your uh, pride settles down and that uh, shiner goes away, try looking at it like this. You fought those characters off. You might even have destroyed a budding career in crime. You know, I might agree to that, Chief, when I'm satisfied that you're right. What the hell happened to me? It's tougher than we thought. Besides that, he's got a partner. So what? There were two of you, too. So we banged him up a little bit, that's all. That's all? Look, what do you want me to do, kill him? That's terrific. Then we never get the money, right? That's the fourth informant we've rousted. Yeah, I don't think they were lying either. Well, then maybe Clifford is right. Yeah, except there was something about uh, the voice behind me. I don't know. I just can't put my finger on it. They uh, call you by name? No. Well, then you're just imagining things. Come on, I got to get some sleep. Oh, yeah, we got to be back by noon. Uh, not we, McLeod. You. I've got the night off, remember? My anniversary. I've got tickets to the ballet, reservations at the Paradise Room, soup to nuts, tuxedo, the whole works. Hey, Carol's going to love that. <laughs> I don't know which is going to please them more, though. The anniversary or knowing I'm not out on a stakeout with you. There you go. <laughs> Anniversary, Joe. Thanks. Okay. Look, we can't try again in broad daylight. If anything goes wrong, he's going to make us for sure. He might make us anyway, following him all around town. Well, what choice we got? Let's go. that those three cons spend all day watching police headquarters will be sent in for medical checkups. What you see is what we got. The question is, who are they following? I didn't get a good look at who got into that cab. Well, unless he changed the rules, whoever it is has got to get out again. For all we know, there may not even be any money. Maybe he spent it. Nah, why would he still be a cop then? He never left the force. He went straight from Taos to New York on some kind of exchange deal. I know, I checked on him back in New Mexico. He lived real quiet back there. No big deal, no big expenses. He lives the same way here. Yeah, he's probably just laying low, taking his time, counting on a nest day. I'm gonna tell you something, this guy's smarter than we thought. We're getting good information. What's that supposed to mean? It means how do you know so much about McLeod? Well, that was the idea, wasn't it, Pearl? I was supposed to go get a line on him for all of us? For all of us, then. Maybe just for you is more like it. How do I know you didn't make a deal with McLeod while we were in the pen? What deal? You're crazy, Burl. Or maybe you took the money yourself, and all this is just a big, beautiful act. Look, that's my brother you're leaning on, all right? I don't like it. Can he talk for himself? I can talk for myself. It's all right, Dal. It's been coming a long time. Let's have it out right now, Burl. All right, you guys got caught. I didn't. So what do you want from me? I'm sorry you spent 12 years in the joint. I'm real sorry about that, but at least I was on the outside watching out for you. Maybe. Girl, I did just what we agreed on. I kept a good eye on the cop, and I did it real good. Never occurred to you we might be in jail for life. You were just going to wait around and hope maybe we'd get out. All right, I 
right, I, I kid you. I'm human just like anybody else. Yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it plenty. Why wouldn't I? Wouldn't you? You guys were in for life. You were as good as dead. And all that dough, all that dough was somewhere. Except all that money always ended up with McLeod. And I wasn't about to take on a cop all by myself. And when I heard you guys was up for parole, well, then, then the whole thing changed. It was, it was like starting all over again, you know, just the three of us. <laughs> hey, look, that's the truth. I waited for you, didn't I? I didn't have to do that, but I did. And I was there at the prison to meet you, wasn't I? Who do you think I'd be looking for if you weren't? All right, that's enough. Brad says it's good enough for me. Well, it ain't good enough for me. Listen, we're not going to get anywhere hassling, Burl. And we all want the same thing, fair and square, an even split. That was the agreement. An even split? What about this? You take that out on McLeod, not on us. Don't worry, pal. You can bet on that. Hey, that's how you stop it. Now what? Well, Marshal, this is it, our last hurrah. Where will we eat? This is our last or all. Maybe we ought to be doing something besides eat. Really, Marshal? He goes from bad to worse. Now he's got a broad with him. Who is it? Oh, girlfriend. Some kind of writer, I think. Pretty thick. How thick? I'm thick enough. Let's get out of here. What are you in the mood for besides that? Sam. Sam. Are you talking to me? No. Why would I be talking to you? Well, I'm sorry, Chris. I guess my police reflex has just got the best of me. I thought that that blue car that was following us seemed to make every turn at me. We better get out of here. Well, there's another one. Another what? Another car. Which one? That green one. I thought you said it was blue. Oh, well, first one was blue. This one was green. They seem to be looking us over. Oh, I see. In other words, there are two cars that followed us to this restaurant, probably to find out what we're up to, right? <laughs> well, at this rate, they're certainly going to be disappointed. That really doesn't make much sense to me. Sam, I'm gonna feed you. Then I'm gonna head you back to my corral and straighten you out. Because there's no doubt about it, you've been in the saddle too long. There you go. Now, what was that all about? We've lost everybody. I don't know about that. Maybe we found who we've really been looking for. How's that again? That guy they've been tailing? I think I made him. I mean, it doesn't make sense his being here in New York, but I'm sure it was him. Who? Who are you talking about? McLeod, that Tiles cop that busted those guys 12 years ago. He's right here in New York, the same time as our friends. It's just too much of a coincidence not to be connected with the money. And man, is that a mind blower. Why? If you'd ever met this McLeod, you wouldn't have to ask. I mean, there's never been a straighter cop. Well, he wouldn't be the first good cop who walked off with a cookie jar. I'll have the lobster bisque and the chef salad. What about you, Sam? It's my treat, remember? Excuse me. Sam, where are you going? Got to make a phone call. I'll be right back. Sam, you never walk out on a waiter in New York. Just order for me, will you, please? Uh, he'll have an order of Mexican jumping beans and a glass of prune juice. Please. for the rest of the day? Uh, for the rest of the day and night, there'll be just the two of us. It's our evening. No faculty meetings, no stakeouts, no... Hello? Hey, 
Hey, Joe. No. Hey, Joe, look, I wouldn't bother you, especially tonight on your anniversary. There's nobody home. Except uh, I just don't want nothing to happen to you. <laughs> what could happen to me, McLeod? I'm not working with you. I'm not even on duty. Yeah, I know that, but something just happened that uh, kind of got me to worrying. What came up? Well, Joe, I can't put my finger on anything definite, but I think that I was followed from headquarters. McLeod, who'd be following you? Well, I don't know, Joe, but, you know, well, coming on the heels of last night, you know, those fellas could have been part of a street gang or racketeers. All I'm saying is that there's no telling whose toes that we might have stepped on. We? Are you trying to tell me they'd be following me, too? Who, oh, Joe? Who's following you? Joe, I'm not trying to tell you anything. All I know is that you, you had your mind on your anniversary and maybe you didn't see anybody. Maybe there wasn't anybody there. I don't know. You don't want to worry me. You just want to make sure I don't stop looking over my shoulder all night. Well, Joe, there's Carol to think about, too, you know. Those fellas last night, uh, they did play a little bit rough. All right, McLeod. You made your point. I'll be on my guard. That's all that I'm asking, Joe. Happy anniversary. Yeah, happy anniversary. Joe, what was that all about? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Just McLeod wishing us a beautiful evening. Looks, uh... This bean soup seems a mite uncooked. Unfulfilled. Not uncooked, unfulfilled. I thought it only appropriate that our meal be as unfulfilled as our last hurrah. Hey, Chris, you ain't mad at me, are you? Mad? <laughs> Why would I be mad? I mean, only wild dogs get mad. Ladies from Manhattan get angry. That's what I am, angry. Certainly not mad. I see. You mean the afternoon is going to end right here at the table. You're not going to take me home, get me out of the saddle or anything. That's right. Huh. You're just going to have to content yourself with your horse until after I've returned from Connecticut with my new book. You know I might ride that horse all the way to Connecticut. You'd look awfully silly riding horseback in your phone booth. Don't give an inch, do you? I might have, but it's too late now. Now I've got appointments all afternoon. You're just going to have to chew on your beans and think carefully about all the things on the menu you missed. The girl. What do you mean, the girl? We've been looking for a handle on the cloud, right? Yeah, that's right. Now you've got it. Oh. It's simple. We grabbed the rubber. Are you crazy? What do we want to get mixed up with her for? It's my cloud we want. Look, getting McLeod is not necessarily money, unless you think maybe he's walking around with $400,000 in his wallet. Hey, bro, Val's right, you know? 
We gotta let McLeod go get it. Wherever he's got his stash, we'd have to let him do that. And we'd be right along with him. What if it's a bank? Do we just walk him in there with a gun in his back? It's been done before. Jennings just sent up your report. Looks like we're finally getting someplace. Now, what do you need? Let's use some more help. I'm getting too many players in the game to watch them all ourselves. Well, OK, I can pull off Tracon and Bear, possibly Antonio, but you're on your own till tomorrow morning. Should be able to handle that. So far, it doesn't look like this uh, McLeod's going anyplace. I'd watch that one pretty close if I were you. Don't let him know you're there. If a cop goes bad, he can be very dangerous. I think between the two of us, we can handle one cowboy. I just remember he carries a badge. A man can get away with a lot when he thinks he owns the law. 10-4. the ballet. Yes? I'd like to talk to you, if I might. Who are you? Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. I'd just like to talk to you. I can talk to you a minute, Miss Coughlin. Like I said, Miss Coughlin, there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Now, why don't you just calm down? Yeah. It's 12 o'clock, Marshal. You wanted to be called. Yeah, thank you.
Oh, what do you think? I've been waiting for you for a long time. Now move it, Cloud. All right, police officers, freeze! Who's worrying about the McLeod? They're not going to help you. What is this? You mean to tell me you don't remember us? Yeah, I remember you. What do you want? What do you want, McLeod? You want to see your girlfriend again? Because we got her. What? Yeah. Miss Chris Coughlin. You want her alive? All you got to do is tell us where the money is. What money? Do we have to go through all that? What money are you talking about? We're talking about the 400 grand from the bank job, cowboy. Well, you know that money was never recovered. It was recovered all right, McLeod. And you're the one that recovered it. I know, because I had every cop checked down in the case. And you're it, pal. You're the only one who could have it, McLeod. The only one. You were that close. But this is ridiculous. You're crazy. All right, McLeod. You don't want to see her again. Just keep it up. We got all night, don't we, bro? So she. But that's all she's got. Look, fella, what I'm trying to explain... Oh, I'm sorry, McLeod. That slipped. Now you were saying about the... The fight! Burl, cut it out. Burl! Take it easy. Get it. Take it easy. Cut it out! All right. Just take it easy. Now you get that money in 24 hours, McLeod, or she's dead, you hear me? We'll call you. And if you ain't got it, or you go to the cops, she's dead. Do you understand? 24 hours, McLeod. Pull this thing over. Let's get him out of here. is uh, Arthur J. Wilson, FBI agent out of Manhattan. And the dead man, Edward T. Carter, another FBI man. Only he's out of New Mexico. New Mexico? Isn't that McLeod's hotel? See if he's in there, Grover. Mrs. Broadhurst, happy anniversary. Oh, thank you, darling. It was a perfectly lovely evening. Well, almost. I don't understand what we were looking around for, though. Well, neither do I, but let's not talk about it because I'll get upset again. I'm sorry, darling. I won't bring it up again. Besides, the evening has just begun. Mm -mm. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> 
You mean even after eight years? Especially after eight years. And especially since that gown is driving me out of my mind. <laughs> Why didn't I just leave the phone off the hook? Hello, who is this? Joe. Joe? McLeod? Is that you, McLeod? Joe, I need your help. Can you pick me up? Pick you up? McLeod, it's my anniversary. I'll see you tomorrow. Joe? I'm hurt. Can you pick me up? Are you out of your mind? We're getting ready for bed. It's our anniversary. Hey, what kind of a joke is this? Joe, I'm at work in Spring Street. McLeod? McLeod? Honey, what is it? Honey, I better go. Joe, Honey, I'll be back as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, don't get undressed. I want to do that. Joe, you want me to sit around and wait for well, you yes. in my evening gown? Yes, it's once a year. It's our anniversary, remember? I'll see you later. Someplace where they can't find me. Who? Who's they? I, I, oh, I can't tell you, Joe. Just. Oh, but McLeod, I gotta take you to a hospital. Look no, at you. Joe, no, please take me to your place, please. My place? Yeah, all right. Please. Okay. Uh, okay, easy now. Oh. Oh. Uh. Said he left around 12.30, just about the same time he heard the shots. How many shots? Four or five, he thinks. McLeod's supposed to be working tonight, isn't he? Two to ten shift. He's not due on duty for another 20 minutes. Maybe he went out for a bite to eat. Without hearing five shots? Well, maybe he's got a favorite place some other part of town. Let's find him. Get him to the bed, honey. Joe, what happened to I him? I don't know, but he's hurt bad. Get some wet towels. Okay. Uh, easy. Okay. All right. What happened to your gun? They took it. Who? Joe, you got to cover for me. Cover for you? I can't report in until I've checked out a couple of things. What things? Who? What, what are you talking about? Joe, I can't let him see me like this. McLeod. Please, please, Joe. McLeod, it's my anniversary. I'll just call in and tell him that... No! Joe, you've got to cover him for me. Please. They've kidnapped Chris. Hello. This is Sims. Do you know where McLeod is? Uh, McLeod? Yeah, McLeod. 
Grover talked me into taking your shift with him, remember? Well, yeah, but... We're supposed to relieve Carmody and O'Hara, and he's 15 minutes late. They're freezing their bloomers off. Where is McLeod, do you know? Well, he, uh... He's not feeling very well. He's, he's sick. Oh? Well, who's covering for him? Uh, I am. You? I thought this was your anniversary. Well, uh, yeah, it is, but I, I promised. Well, will you get your butt down here right away, Joe? Before these guys lynch me? Right. Where is it? Jorgensen's Bakery at 8th and Bank Street. We're in the empty store across the street. I'm on my way. I'm sorry, honey, but do whatever you can for him. Okay. I'll be back in the morning. Okay, you guys, take off. What's that, new work clothes? Or are you trying to catch a penguin? Hey, that's funny. Joe, what happened to McLeod? I told you, he's sick. I know, I know, but where is he? They're screaming for him downtown. What for? Geez, don't you know? Two cops were gunned down in front of McLeod's hotel tonight. but he's been calling Chris's apartment on and off ever since you left. Sure. He wanted you to wake him up as soon as you came home. McLeod? McLeod. Joe? How are you feeling? <clears throat> like a piece of raw hamburger. You gonna tell me what happened with the two cops that got hit outside your hotel? What happened to him? What do you know? One's dead. The other one's got a 70-30 chance the wrong way. There's nothing I could do, Joe. I and mean, they had to drop on me. McLeod, who? Who? And what has it got to do with Chris? Either you tell me or you tell Chief Clifford, because right now, my neck is so stretched out, I, I look like a giraffe. Oh, I'm okay, I guess. <laughs> I suppose you got a right to know at least what I know. But you keep it to yourself, at least for now. For now. Well, it was 12 years ago in, in Taos, and I was working with my partner, Eddie Coy, and we got a call on a bank robbery. We were told to set up a roadblock near Parsons Peak on a back road going through the mountains into Colorado. Well, we blocked the road and waited. We could be out here forever before we say anything. Yeah. What makes them think those guys are coming this way? More likely to take the main interstate to Colorado. Yeah, that's more likely. That's why I'd come this way if I was him. You know, that call set that was iron to the teeth. McLeod, I ain't so sure I want to see him in our county. Get married in a week. <laughs> you still got time to change your mind. Why don't you go up on the rise, see what you can see? Hmm? All right.
car coming at a pretty good clip. They stayed on the hard top. The Jeep is a lousy pursuit vehicle, but great in cross country. And I figured that's where my strength was. I knew the road like my own hip pocket. It would curve back and forth the side of the mountain until it hit the top, and then it went on level for miles. So I had to get the wagon before it reached the top, and my only chance was to go cross country and catch him on the other side. spot and they made a fast turn and the chase went the other way. They kept pulling away, shooting at me. It didn't make things easier. I had one more chance. There was an old fire road which would get me right in front of the wagon if I didn't turn over barreling down through sagebrush. That black station wagon just crashed at the ghost town on Old Box Canyon Road. I don't see any movement down there. I'm going down to investigate. You better send an ambulance. 10-4. Will do. Nice going, McLeod. Attention all units. Attention all units. Proceed at once to Road 111, about 12 miles north of intersection with 553. Approach area with caution. Over. Unit 4, proceed to same location. Possibility of armed action. Proceed with caution. I lost in the car. Get out here. Make it quick! Where's the others? 
By myself. Get over there with the wheel. His hand's behind your back. Turn around! was the last one. I'd gotten him in his left arm. Matter of fact, the hospital told me later on that he'd never be able to use his arm again. Well, we grilled Connors and Rankin for three days, and they stuck to the story. They said they gave the money to Kruger. Kruger's the guy you killed? Yeah. Why would they give him the money? Well, they decided to split up and meet later, and they gave it to Kruger because he was the strongest and the dumbest and the least likely to cross him with the money. How much money? 400,000 in old bills. Hey, what about the fourth guy? Well, we ask ourselves the same question. If there was a fourth guy, it could have been Brad, Val Rankin's brother. But we never found out for sure. So why do they think you took the money? Because I was the first one to come upon Kruger. And I left town, came to the big city. At least that's the way they figured. So what are you going to do now? Well, there's nothing that I can do except play along with him. Play along? Joe, I've got no choice. I've got to find $400,000 or they're going to kill Chris, and I've got to do it without the department knowing about it. Cloud, you're crazy. You're stark staring crazy. You think you can keep a thing like this quiet? The chief has got to be told. Well, Joe, you tell the chief and they're going to kill Chris. And what if they don't? I mean, what do you think her chances are anyway? I mean, when the shooting starts, everything goes crazy. She's just as likely to get killed by the police as the ones that are holding her. You know that. Joe, Chris's life is in my hands. And yours, too, now. What will I tell him happened to you? Well, just tell him that you haven't seen me since I first asked you to pull my shift. For how long? As long as it takes. As long Jump. as it takes. Let him rest. Joe, I can't stay here. I gotta get out of here. I gotta start. I gotta find Chris. I... We should get some rest ourselves, honey. Anniversary, honey.
just what I need. Rogers! Come in here. Where's McLeod? McLeod? Those two cops that were hit last night were working on a case that McLeod had been assigned to 12 years ago. They just dug the slugs out. They came from a six-gun. Now, do you know anybody that uses a six-gun? Where is he, Joe? Well, you know McLeod, Chief. He could be anywhere. You worked for him last night, didn't you? Yeah. Why? Well, he called and asked me to. Why? Well, he, he wasn't feeling very well. Then where is he? Maybe he's at his hotel. He isn't. Maybe he's staying with some friends. What friends? Well, whatever friends he's got, Chief. I mean, anyway, he's not the only six gun in town. You know what that is? The ballistics report. Those slugs came from McLeod's gun. You're covering for him, aren't you? You're his friend and you're covering for him. Now, where is he? you once more, and I'm ordering you to tell me. Ordering you, do you understand? Where is he? Consider yourself suspended indefinitely. I want an APB, Samuel McLeod. McLeod? You heard me. You have his description. Yes, sir. There's a Mr. Edmonds from the FBI waiting to see you. Send him in. That's all. That's all. Chief Clifford? Mr. Edmonds, have a seat. Thank you. I get right to the point. Looks like one of your officers shot down two of ours. Well, I wasn't aware that a uh, comprehensive profile had been uh, completed. At least without a single eyewitness. Well, we have enough to know that McLeod was heavily involved in a bank robbery that we informed your office about. The fact that he arrested the two men 12 years ago. The fact that the money is still missing. The shooting of Carter and Wilson, the two agents who were assigned to try to track down the money. And McLeod's rather sudden disappearance, they just all kind of seem to piece together. Now, we want McLeod, and we want him fast. Well, I assure you, my office will be doing everything possible to find him. Good. We've already put out an APB. However, Mr. Edmonds, there's an explanation, I'm sure, other than the one that meets the eye. Now, personally, I can vouch for McLeod. He's a maverick and all that. Nobody knows it better than me. But I can, and I do vouch for him. Does that mean that your APB is some kind of special kid gloves treatment? Because that's not the order in my department. As far as we're concerned, McLeod pumps six shells into two of my men. And it's no holds barred. The New York City Police Department does not condone lynch mobs, city or federal. Chief, we want McLeod, with or without your cooperation. It would be better with. But either way, we'll get him. Edmonds, if your men get him first, they'd better go by the book. I've got 27,000 cops out there that don't like vigilantes either. Well, with all that extra manpower running around, you should have no problem locating one rampaging cowboy. I'll expect to be hearing from you, Chief. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Does it hurt to chew? Oh, a little bit. Here, let me cut it up into smaller pieces for you. You know, they... Found a bunch of packages in Chris's parking space, but there's no sign of Chris. Hi, honey. Hi. How are you feeling? Oh, a little achy. I think I'll live. You don't look too good. I'm not. Move over. What's the matter? 
I've been suspended. Suspended? Why? Don't ask. And they've got an APB out on you. They match the slugs in those cops with your gun. Well, that figures. What about that guy in the hospital? He's still in a coma, hanging on by a thread. I wouldn't count on him. Well, at least that steak looks good. I'll have one myself. Oh, hon, I'm sorry. That's the last one. I can make you a ham sandwich. Okay. Only you're gonna have to go out and get the ham. Never mind. Suddenly I'm not hungry. I'm gonna make a pot of coffee. Well, what are you gonna do now? If you go out on the street, they'll pick you up. If they ever come up here, they'll pick us both up. Well, we gotta keep stalling for time, Joe. And, you know, we got to somehow make Connors and them think that we can lead them to the money. We? Oui. You said you were suspended. I mean, what else you gotta do? Yeah, why not? It's better than sitting on a park bench, right? Right. You know, I still don't know how it happened. Yesterday, I was celebrating my eighth anniversary. I was happy, I had a future, I was gonna sleep with my wife. Today, I'm out of a job, I'm harboring a fugitive from justice, I sleep on the floor, and I can't even get a ham sandwich. Well, you know, Joe, it's always darkest before the dawn. I'm glad to hear that. Now, you just tell me how we're supposed to be able to lead them to the money. Well, you know, I've been laying here, Joe, racking my brain, and I, uh, I think that that money is still out there where they got caught, and I think one of them knows it, and I think he's been putting on some kind of an act. Yeah, but why? <sighs> well, he's got those others thinking that I know where the money is. And if I'm dead, of course, the mystery of the money disappears with me. And then the one who really knows where the money is can go out there in peace and pick it up and not have to worry about his partners. All right, where do you go from there? Back to my hotel. They said they was going to call in 24 hours, didn't they? Well, that's about 1 a.m. McLeod, you can't go back to your hotel. The department's watching it. Well, that's where you come in. Oh, McLeod. Spot you, you got to promise to surrender on the spot. I don't want any bullet holes in that overcoat. It's my best. I appreciate your concern, Joe. You know, it's not just the overcoat I'm worried about. I know, Joe. Look, if I get through this, I promise you that I'll never work with you again. up to. Whatever it is, it's got to involve McLeod. You can bet on that. What do you think? Looking for McLeod? Well, isn't everybody? I thought you'd been suspended. Yeah, I'm trying to work out of it. Do you mind? Hell no. Be our guest. Yeah, I figure it's uh, my only way out of the doghouse, you know? You may be right. Look, Joe, he's your friend. If he should get in touch with you, tell him it's not just us. The Federal boys are looking for him, too. And they may not be as polite as our guys. So tell him it would be a good idea if he'd personally turned himself into the chief. A hell of a good idea. Yeah. Tell him I'm in conference. Tell him I've gone home. Tell him I'm dead. 
Tell him anything. Hello. You got the money, McCloud? Yeah. Uh, look, you win. I'm beat. I'll, uh... I'll get the money for you, but I want to talk to the girl first. I want to make sure that she's all right. Say hello to your boyfriend. Sam, I'm a... All right, McLeod, where is it? Wait a minute. I didn't even get a chance to talk to her. You can talk to her after you deliver. You know, that's... Uh, that's not going to be so easy. I... The money's not here. I have to go to New Mexico to get it. New Mexico? He says the money's in New Mexico. Give me that phone. McLeod, you must be judging us by your country cousins. We don't buy it. Well, I'm telling you, that's where it's buried. If it was there, you wouldn't be here. I was assigned here. I didn't have any choice. But the money is right where it was buried 12 years ago. And I think you know it. You talk a good game, McLeod. And I can deliver. All right. Go get it and bring it back and you get the girl. Well... <laughs> Yeah, well, that's easy to say. That's not quite so easy to do. You know, I'm a wanted man. You guys took care of that. That's tough, McLeod. We're all going to bust out crying. Well, I think that I can get out of town, all right. But it's getting back in that's going to be the problem. You know, if they picked me up and I got the money on me, I... That's all she wrote. You guys have blown it. So what do you want? We make the exchange in New Mexico. The money for the girl. Are you crazy? You expect us to take the broad out there. We get her on a plane and she runs off. No, if one of you guys goes with me first... ...and uses me as a hostage until she gets there... You're going a little fast, boy. Okay, look, it works this way. One of you goes with me first, right? The other two has the girl in New York City as a hostage. Well, there's no way that I'm going to cross you. And when we get to New Mexico, the guy's got a gun at my head. So he calls back and he says, all right, now bring the girl. Well, she's not going to try to run away. She's not going to do anything as long as she knows I'm a hostage with a gun at my head. And then we just exchange hostages. You understand? I'm going to take the 6 o'clock airplane to Albuquerque on Global Airlines. I want one of you guys to meet me at the airport. I'll be wearing city clothes with dark glasses. So look for me. Wait a minute. Hello. McLeod. He wants to do it in New Mexico. He wants one of us to go with him first and the other two to come with the broad. I don't get it. Well, it makes sense. We get the money faster that way. I'll go with him. Why are you? Why not? Wait a minute. What's, what's to stop you from going out there and making a deal with him? He's not going to make any deals until the broad gets there safe. You know that. It was your idea to hold him. But that was with Brad and I around to make sure you don't go cuckoo and go blowing him up, leaving us all up the creek. Val, I'm going to make you a promise. A real promise. I'm not going to lay one finger on it. Not one finger. Until we get the dough. Okay?
all right? Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We're down to 12 o'clock. We're going bye-bye, sweetheart. You happy now? Yeah, I have my purse. Sure. Oh. The girl called it. Everything's all set? Good. Got your little present here. One. And two. All we gotta do now is wait, right? Right. You really got it, huh, McLeod? That's what we come out here for, wasn't it? You all right? Hey, come on, McLeod. How long are you going to stall? No stall. So where is it? Well, about 30 miles from here. All right. Go get it. <laughs> well, it's not quite that easy. I got a, another problem to solve first. What now? Well, I got no gun. She's got no gun. You guys have got the guns. What if I bring the money back here? What happens then? How do I know you're not going to say adios and leave us pushing up daisies? Look, McLeod, we're getting mighty sick and tired of this. Why? You know, you've never been this close before. All I'm saying is that we all go get it together, that's all. We take two cars. We get the money, and we take one car, you take one car, and hopefully we'll never see each other again. What's wrong with that? Okay, McLeod. You want it that way? That's the way we'll do it. Problem that we gotta solve first. Cloud, I've had it. Just shut up, relax. One more, and it's all yours. Come on, you said the same thing back in New York. You said the same thing at the Motown. We're here, ain't we? What's the problem, cowboy? I want her out of here. What are you talking about? Well, I haven't been thinking too good. You know that. I mean, what guarantee do I have if I get the money? You're gonna do anything but kill us, unless you give me a gun. I know you're not gonna do that. What do you want, Cloud? Well, it's simple. She goes. She goes. I mean that she goes. That way she'll be free to finger you in case anything happens to me. That's the only guarantee that I got, that you're going to keep up your end of the bargain. That's it. All right. Get out of here. We'll give her the key. Hey, wait a minute. All right, Chris, get out. Sam, they're going to kill you anyway. No, they're not. I heard them say Chris, so. Chris, get up to the car and get on the road and get Sam. back to the town. Amina, get out of here. Go on. All right, Cal. 
cowboy. Your problem just left. Now, where is it? Let's go. your money, don't you? What are you doing up there, McLeod? I've got one more problem! What? What problem? I'll let you know I don't know where the money is! fighting among ourselves. Get in the back of that building. Come on! All right, all right. <laughs>
I told you to scoot. What are you doing here? If I had, you wouldn't have known where the money was. The money? Well, I got a confession to make. I don't know where the money is. I do. You, you do? FBI man will live, thank God. And he's identified the man that did the shooting. Well, I'm real happy about that. And you, Broadhurst, a seasoned officer, conning your own kind, your own kind. I'm with the chief. If either of you had just come to me and told me, if only once, McLeod, you did things right instead of riding off half-cocked, if only once you went by the book and simply told me the facts, none of this would have had to happen. Would you have believed me if I'd have told you? Believe you? How could I? Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. 